Welcome to the Bitter Upper Lip. My name is Tyler. Once again, thank you very much for joining me today. So this is review number 10. It's the weekend, so we are going to pile in with a big boy today, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to do from Monday Night Brewing out of Atlanta, Georgia, their breakfast anti-meridium. This is a imperial brown ale made with roasted coffee, Uganda vanilla beans that has further been aged in maple bourbon barrels and had maple syrup added to it. So this big boy comes in at 13.5% ABV. Its IBUs are sitting at 45 and its SRM score is at 35. So in looking through the bottle a bit, I'll just bring it up here so you can read it. So I've had this out of the fridge now for at least 15 minutes to try to go with that serving temperature suggestion. The label says this is the first brewing of this, and as you can see on the side, it says 2019. I do know that this was released in September of 2016, so this is part of Monday Night's Garage Series, so it's a very limited release, and I believe you can only get this beer in Alabama, Tennessee, and Georgia. So Monday Night Brewing has been around, uh, as a lot of craft brews in America at least are, as a craft brewing uh, group since like 2006. As the name implies, Monday night is when they started getting together making beers. And it wasn't until 2011 that Monday night actually started distributing their two beers. I believe it was an IPA and a Scotch Ale, like a Wee Heavy of all things. And they did contract brewing. And then in 2012, they set up on the west side of the city in one of the breweries that they're at today. And, you know, the rest is history. They're known for putting out um, a wide variety of different styles of beers with some really cool, fun adjuncts on them, including some of their Barrel Age series. But they've already been getting some pretty good reviews. Uh, they took home, I think, a couple medals from the Great American Beer Fest, and they've won a lot of um, well-known like blind taste tests for a variety of their beers. So, yeah, they very quickly, I think, established themselves as definitely a brewery I think you can you can give a second glance to if you're ever in a distribution area and you've never had their beers, give it a try, I'd say. But this is a take on Monday night's anti-meridium, which is essentially the same beer, except that it's not been aged in maple bourbon barrels and it hasn't had maple syrup added to it. I have not had either one of the beers. I have not been able to get this before, and I was lucky enough to be able to grab this bottle at a local brew shop not too long ago and have been saving it for a special occasion. So it being the weekend and it being the fact that I'm done with a lot of my grad school assignments, let's do some day drinking, shall we? So, and just gabbing a little bit more, the for all of y'all that like, you know, the, the detail nerds like I am, the maple barrels came from Bacell, uh, Maple Farm, which is up north in Ohio, I believe. The coffee was roasted ro locally by, they're like, yeah, Batdorf and Bronson Coffee. They are uh, a local roaster in Atlanta, Georgia. They also have some locations in Washington. And of course, the vanilla beans come from Uganda. So there you go. Fun with adjectives. So yeah, I'm going to be drinking it today out of a very small sifter because again, this is a big, big beer at 13.5%, like literally uh, half a percent down from the legal limit in Georgia, which is 14. So let's go ahead and open up. Okay, getting some smoke coming out of the bottle. That's good. It's been nice and sealed. Let's see what we get here. So right out of the bottle here, um, the head is dissipating pretty quickly, which given the fact that this is a 13.5, that isn't terribly surprising. I've got some good alcohol legs going on the side. Bubbles, even the ones that did dissipate quickly, the ones that have remained are really big and fat. Um, very loud popping bubbles. There's like nothing sitting around there, as you can see. This is a clean glass. Some carbonation on the bottom of the glass. I can see a little bit coming around the sides. It is a very, very, very dark brown. It's not black. I can see a little bit of light around the sides. A um, little bit of auburn hues. 
like the darkest of dark brown reds. Yeah, it looks, looks great. Um, looks like I'd expect a big barrel-aged imperial brown ale would look like coffee too. So, all right, let's go ahead and get a nose on it. Hmm. Right at the forefront and get it. I definitely get the barrel age quality of it. Big vanilla woody notes, most definitely from the barrels. It's a bit of a spicy sweet note too, which it could very much be the maple syrup playing into it. I'm also definitely getting the coffee notes out of this. Um, we're sitting here at the end of April and this was bottled in September and coffee is known to dissipate a bit as a smell and a flavor, but um, I'm still getting a, a pleasant amount of coffee on this. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting uh, some toffee out of that. I'm caramel, again, probably a nice interplay between the bourbon barrel notes and the maple syrup and the malts that they're using. And I'm also getting that very um, pleasantly stereotypical tobacco smell. Um, not like a cigarette or anything, but if y'all have ever been around like raw tobacco, um, it's got a bit of that kind of earthy, almost leathery smell to it, like a, you know, like a humidor would. Definitely sitting about third or fourth place though. It's not a very predominant smell. The big smells I'm getting definitely are a lot of the sweet, uh, woody, oaky notes from the barrels coupled with some of the Spicier woody notes from like the maple. A little bit of chocolate. Um, again, it, it's much more, I feel like the chocolate might be cloyed from the other sweet notes that I'm getting, like the vanilla and the maple might be playing into that. But there is a little bit of a cocoa smell to it. Um, much more coffee though than a, than a cocoa smell though. Yeah, there's also a, It's also a smell like it's kind of like uh, like a molasses type smell a bit. Almost like a blackstrap molasses a little bit because there's a bit of that. Sounds like almost like a bitterness in the smell. Like it smells like a very just super super earthy kind of sweetness. Yeah, this smells absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, it's warmed up, so as we drink this as I'll do, we'll, we'll continue sniffing on it, but let's go get some lips on it. Cheers. Yeah. So, definitely the big notes that they get right at the front of the tongue are the maple and the wood from the barrels. Middle of the tongue, um, I'm getting much more of the chocolatey notes than it was on the nose and it's going alongside the coffee. Back of the tongue, a little bit more bitterness. Actually, in the back of the tongue, I'm getting much more bitterness from the coffee than I was in the middle. So. Nice center play with a little bit of the vanilla notes, but with a beer like this, I'm happy that I'm getting more maple than vanilla out of it, given the nature of the bar of barrel aging. Let's get a little swirl on it, just to get a little bit more air into it. Yeah, that one swirl, that it's, it's just now really, really starting to explode much more with the barrel notes. So, and that smell and in the taste, despite the fact that this is a 13.5% ABV beer, it does not smell boozy at all. Like I'm not getting any kind of like alcohol heat on the nose. I'm not really getting any in the mouthfeel. Um, 
probably to the fact too of all the uh, other flavors playing out. I'm not getting a burn or heat. I'm feeling a little bit on the back of the throat, which is to be expected. The body. The body is nice. Um, I think what a lot of people, if you get this beer, I think what you're going to have to re remind yourself is that this is not a, a Russian Imperial Stout or a Porter or anything like that. Because the body is a little bit lighter than that. Um, it's good. It's a good, I'd say, hefty, good, medium body beer. But if you're going to go into this as you would... Again, a lot of these other beers where you're kind of expecting that much more heavier lacquer and kind of mouthfeel, this is not going to do it. But again, given the fact that stylistically this is a brown ale, I'm not expecting that to do that. But that would just be my kind of initial disclaimer and quotient is that as you're drinking this beer, as you're focused on the mouthfeel, remember that you're drinking a, a big brown ale and not a big giant Russian Imperial Stout. Yeah, but even then, I'd say it's medium, leaning toward like medium heavy mouthfeel, which is nice with the character of how big of a beer this is in terms of the flavors. You've got to have some of that weight and chain of the mouthfeel to carry all those flavors. Because one of my biggest gripes with a lot of these barrel aged beers is just how goddamn unbalanced they are sometimes. Um, it's almost become, I think, a kitsch for some brewers of this idea of like, we'll just take some kind of just whatever beer, throw it in a barrel, age it for some indeterminate amount of time, maybe throw some kind of adjunct like coffee, of course, is a popular one, or, co or chocolate or anything, drain it from the barrel and sell it for a premium price, and it's just a goddamn mess. Like, it, and that that's the problem is that you know, beer making, like cooking or anything else, requires balance, ratio, and execution. So with these barrel-aged beers, I'm usually much, much more picky and discerning about the fact of trying to see, okay, like, did does this beer even taste like it needed to be barrel-aged, potentially? That's another thing. This beer, I would say yes. Um, it seems like the base beer with the coffee and the vanilla beans, it already being a big imperial brown ale, is working really well with a lot of the notes that I'm getting from the bourbon barrel aging, which you're going to typically get, again, that kind of vanilla, caramely, woody flavor that you would expect from bourbon. Coupled with the maple syrup, I think playing very well with, of course, the vanilla and some of the toastier malt characters that you would get from a big brown ale. So, yeah, I mean, it's just got a very nice... Very nice harmony to it. There's a bit of sweetness on it, but again, it, it's a it's a it's a somewhat more I think subdued sweetness. Like I'm getting that maple syrup, I'm getting that vanilla, but it doesn't taste candied. It still tastes like a beer. I'm still getting the nice bitter notes, um, like from the coffee, from the malt, from whatever hops they decide to use in this. So. Yeah, not really getting anything new on the nose, which I wasn't expecting. I guess the last thing I'll say on the tasting is the finish is pretty good. Um, the big things I get on the finish are really the, uh, the coffee bitterness and some of that kind of residual woodiness from the barrel aging is what I'm getting. Not a lot of carbonation going on the mouthfeel, so that's probably playing on the fact, too, of some of the finish. I mean, usually beers that are much more popping and bubbling with carbonation are usually going to uh, vacate the palate much quicker and clean themselves up a bit. This isn't doing that, but then again, given the nature of the beer, I don't really want that flavor to go away quickly. I want this to kind of sit in my mouth and savor it because, again, this is a sipper. So, yeah, tasty beer. Um, it, it's definitely not the best barrel-aged beer I've had. Um, it's not the best maple bourbon barrel-aged beer I've had, but it's a very tasty take on the style. 
Um, I feel like I got my money's worth out of the bottle. Um, I would definitely say, you know, as with a lot of these videos, it really just depends on stylistically what you want. If you're just someone that is an ardent collector and taster of brown ales, try it. If you're someone that's ardent about trying to expand your palate of barrel aged beers, go ahead and try it. Um, would I say that you need to like line up for a bottle release day and, and do any kind of whale hunting for it? Personally, no. Again, it's okay. It's good. Am I happy I bought it? Yeah. Do I see myself buying another bottle of it again off the shelf? Probably not because I've had it. Um, if I was at a bar and they were maybe doing like a nitro release of it or something, yeah, I would probably try that just to, if anything, see um, how the mouthfeel might change on it. Enjoy it as a beer. Probably won't buy it again. Um, yeah, that that's the best that I can say on it, everyone. So, um, yeah, to all of y'all out there, like, do y'all have any thoughts on Monday Night Brewing? Um, have you had this beer before? Do you have any questions about this beer or Monday Night Brewing? As always, feel free to leave some comments down below. Let's get a discussion going. If you like this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. And if you want to continue hearing me gab on about other beers in the future, a subscription is appreciated too. So as always with uh, one of these reviews, everyone, um, thank you again for watching. And always remember to keep your mind sharp, your heart clean, and your upper lip bitter. We'll see you next time.